Greetings everyone, welcome back to the Codesultant channel. In the previous segment of this video series, we delved into the grounding prerequisites for separately derived systems as outlined in sections 250.30 to 250.30, A1. Now, in this installment, our focus shifts to exploring the exemptions detailed in section 250.30, A1. Exception number one states that for systems installed in accordance with section 450.6, which covers the requirements for secondary ties of transformers. A single system bonding jumper connection to the tie point of the grounded circuit conductors from each power source shall be permitted. This exception is similar to the rules for dual-fed services outlined in section 250.24, A, 3 of the NEC. In those cases, a single grounding electrode conductor is allowed to be connected to the tie point of the grounded conductors from each power source. Likewise, exception number one allows for a single system bonding jumper to be connected at the tie point of the grounded circuit conductors from each power source in a system installed per section 450.6. This exception applies specifically to installations that have a double-ended panel connecting two separately derived systems, whether they are generators, transformers, or other sources. This type of configuration is common in applications requiring large capacity or redundancy, such as high-rise buildings, hospitals, or other critical facilities. Exception number two pertains to outdoor separately derived systems and stipulates that if a building or structure receives power from a feeder connected to such a system, a system bonding jumper can be installed at both the source of the separately derived system and the first disconnecting means. However, this is allowed as long as doing so does not establish a parallel path for the grounded conductor. Let's stop in these sentences and let's analyze the rules. In the scenario where both the outdoor separately derived system and the first disconnecting means are equipped with their own system bonding jumpers, it's crucial to prevent the creation of parallel paths for grounded conductors. Here are some potential scenarios where a parallel path can be created if the following methods has been established. 1. By employing metal ferrous raceways and fittings between the enclosure for the separately derived system and the disconnecting means. 2. By utilizing metal piping systems or structural members as grounding electrodes for the separately derived system, which may subsequently come into contact with grounded surfaces. Therefore, to avoid creating a parallel path for current, the raceway and fittings between the outdoor separately derived and the disconnect means are not made of metals and the grounded electrode must be used as not connected to the building grounding electrode system. Furthermore, exception number two specifies that the grounded conductor for this installation must not be smaller in size than the system bonding jumper, the dimensions of which can be referenced in table 250.102, C1. It's worth noting that the grounded conductor serves not only to facilitate the path for unbalanced currents but also to provide a route for ground fault currents. For determining the appropriate sizing, you can refer to my video covering section 250.28, D. Lastly, it's important to clarify that for this exception, a connection through the earth is not considered as establishing a parallel path. This is because the earth does not have an effective current path. Exception number 3 states that the size of the system bonding jumper for a system supplying a class 1, class 2, or class 3 circuit, and deriving from a transformer rated at no more than 1000 volt amperes, must not be smaller than the derived ungrounded conductors. Additionally, it must not be smaller than 14 AWG for copper or 12 AWG for aluminum. The regulations concerning the sizing of system bonding jumpers for small transformers used in class 1, class 2, or class 3 remote control or signaling circuits deviate from the specifications outlined in 250.28, where sizing is typically determined based on table 250.102, C1, which prescribes a minimum size of number 8 copper or 6 aluminum conductor. Exception number 3 permits bonding jumpers for transformers rated below 1000 VA to be smaller than number 8. However, due to the small size of the transformer, a number 8 copper conductor as a jumper may not be suitable for termination provisions. Instead, these jumpers are required to match the size of the secondary phase legs of the transformer and must never be smaller than number 14 copper or number 12 aluminum. Section 250.30, A1A. The system bonding jumper should connect the grounded conductor to the supply side bonding jumper and the normally non-current carrying metal enclosure. The illustration shows a system bonding jumper that is connected at the source or a separately derived system. 
In this case, the system bonding jumper must connect the grounded conductor to two key points. 1. The supply side bonding jumper. 2. The normally non-current carrying metal enclosure. This connection at the source is crucial because, in the event of a ground fault, the supply side bonding jumper carries the fault current going back to the source. This helps ensure the proper operation of overcurrent protection devices and maintains safety. Section 250.30, A1B. Installed at the first disconnecting means. The system bonding jumper shall connect the grounded conductor to the supply side bonding jumper, the disconnecting means enclosure, and the equipment grounding conductors. The illustration shows a system bonding jumper that is connected at the first disconnecting means, rather than at the source. In this case, where the system bonding jumper is installed at the first disconnecting means, it must connect the grounded conductor to three key points. 1. The supply side bonding jumper. 2. The normally non-current carrying enclosure of the first disconnecting means. 3. The equipment grounding conductor. The reason this connection is important is that if a ground fault occurs, the fault current needs to have a low impedance path back to the source. When the system bonding jumper is connected at the first disconnect, the fault current will not only flow through the equipment grounding conductor but also through the grounded conductor. That's why the grounded conductor must be sized at least as large as the supply side bonding jumper or the system bonding jumper itself. This ensures the grounded conductor can safely carry the full fault current back to the source. Exception. Separately derived systems, comprising multiple sources of identical type connected in parallel, may have the system bonding jumper installed at the paralleling switchgear, switchboard, or another point of parallel connection, rather than at the disconnecting means situated at each individual source. The illustration shows multiple sources of the same type that are connected in parallel. In this case, the system bonding jumper can be installed at the paralleling equipment, such as, paralleling switchgear. Paralleling switchboard, another point of parallel connection for the multiple sources. This approach correlates with the exception number 1 in section 250.30, A1. The key point is that when you have multiple identical sources connected in parallel, the system bonding jumper does not need to be installed at each source. Instead, it can be installed at the common point where the parallel connection is made between the sources. This provides a single, convenient location to bond the grounded conductor to the supply side bonding jumper and the normally non-current carrying metal enclosures. Installing the system bonding jumper at the paralleling equipment still fulfills the requirement to bond the grounded conductor back to the source, but in a more consolidated manner when dealing with multiple parallel sources. In our upcoming discussion, let's delve into section 250.30A2, which covers supply side bonding jumpers. Thank you all for watching.